Welcome to Biology of Human Disease. I'm Dr. Jenny Clark, and I'll be your guide to learning about disease this semester. I'm excited that you've joined the class and hope you'll find it interesting. This quick video is designed to show you how I've organized things on Blackboard. When you log into Blackboard and click on our class, you'll be directed to the announcements page. This will highlight the lectures due for the week and any assignments due. Anything new that I need to let you know about will also be mentioned here. Navigate using the toolbar on the left. It's arranged in alphabetical order and it's fairly self-explanatory. Let's start in the information section. This has some files that I emailed to you before the start of the semester, such as the syllabus, the annotated lecture schedule. This has links to all the lecture videos which are posted on YouTube, the assignment calendar, and some other information like making good posts on the discussion board and using uh, the wiki tool with your groups to complete lecture outlines. Let's look first at the, at the assignment calendar. The assignment calendar is meant to be a quick visual to highlight the lectures and assignments due week by week. I've set this class up as if it were a Monday Wednesday class with different lectures assigned on Monday and Wednesday for each week. Um, it is an online class so you can watch the lectures whenever you wish during the week but I do encourage you to keep up with the schedule and to make a regular time to devote to this class just as if you were attending class face to face. Uh, good habits will make it easier to stay up with the progress of the class. So you can see on the first week we start with the Monday holiday so only one lecture is assigned for the first week on Wednesday. If we look at week two we have two lectures assigned and the boxes at the bottom of each week in blue highlight the discussion board posts that are due for the week. You will have one discussion board post due for every lecture on the calendar. This serves two purposes. Number one, the discussion board posts are a way for me to track attendance. And secondly, and more importantly, the discussion board is a great way for you to ask questions of your peers and help your peers by answering their questions. So if we look at week two, um, on Monday we have lecture two scheduled and the first discussion board post is due by Tuesday. This means you can make a post in the week two discussion forum anytime before Tuesday to get credit for that first post. Your second post will be due by Thursday after the second lecture is scheduled. And so you'll get credit for the second post if it's made on Wednesday or Thursday. Your post can be questions, answers to someone's question, uh, they may be links to information online that relate to lecture along with a discussion of how that relates to lecture and what you learn from the link. Uh, you can also discuss your experience with a disease or the experience of someone you know. Look online for discussion board guidelines to read more about my philosophy of what constitutes a good discussion post. Other online classes that I have taught, including human genetics, students find the discussion board to be extremely helpful and a great way to participate in discussion with your peers. Many times you'll find that when you explain a topic to someone, you'll remember it much better than simply studying it alone. So I encourage you to use the discussion board and post as many times as you like. Uh, you will get credit for two posts per week by the deadlines, up to two points per post. So for the first week, you will introduce yourself on the discussion board in the introduction forum, and then you'll make one post in the first, in the week one discussion forum related to lecture one. Those are the minimum number of posts. Okay. We can also see some due dates here. The first quiz is gonna be due on Friday of the second week. Now some due dates are not on Monday and Wednesday, and this is an effort to provide greater flexibility in due date since it is an online class you can have extra time you may certainly complete any of these items early you could complete quiz one on Wednesday or Monday as you wish let's go back to blackboard apart from the information area if we look down we have the assignments area this details instructions for all the assignments and there are places for you to submit certain assignments so our first assignments are to introduce yourself on the discussion board, to form a group. You'll be working in groups of two to four. I find that students who work in groups have much greater success in the class than students who work alone. You may certainly work alone. However, um, you may be penalized 
um, points for working alone, and this is just to encourage you to work in groups. I really find that you'll have greater success working in groups, so I really want everyone to find someone to work in a group with. And you're, you'll be able to find someone on the discussion board as you introduce yourself and read each other's introductions. Okay, we also have the first group assignment here, the instructions, and a place where you can submit your first group assignment by clicking on this link here. Going back to our menu, um, if we go down to Unit 1 Lectures, the class is divided into four units. There are four tests. The test number four will be the final exam. And so for each one, I will create a menu uh, item for each unit. So Unit 1 begins with links to lectures on YouTube. Let's take a look at the annotated schedule for Unit 1. I'm going to open that in a new tab. So here we have our lectures, the topic, and links to the lecture videos. Most lecture videos are divided. Um, they're not just one long lecture. This is to make it easier for you to target what you want to look at at a specific time. Um, so most lectures are anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes long. You have the time here summarized at the end of the link. There's also the related reading from the textbook. Uh, the textbook is listed here at the bottom. I use the same textbook as is used for the Bio 15 microbiology class at Saddleback College. Um, this has great information about disease as well it has a lot of really good information about basic biology. This textbook is available on reserve if you look it up under Microbiology or Professor Innes, you'll find it in the library. However, for our use, we really don't need the most current edition of this textbook. I really want everyone to get a textbook and do the reading, so I would encourage you to go online and search for a used copy of an older edition, such as a 9th or 10th edition textbook. You can find these online for as cheap as $20. So please get a textbook and use it to keep up with the assigned reading listed here. Okay. Now for each lecture, uh, there are two things associated with a lecture. There's a lecture outline, um, so listed here in a Word format and also a PDF format. And there are also the lecture slides that you'll see in the videos posted in a PowerPoint and Adobe Reader format. Um, so if you don't have Microsoft Office, look at the Adobe Reader PDF format. And if you're unable to open these files, let's go back to information. Here I've added a link to Adobe Reader where you can download that for free. So you can access any PDF files. One more thing I want to show you real quick, the discussion section. This has a number of forums. Uh, we'll start with the introduction forum. And each week there will be a forum. And so in each week's forum, you'll need to post twice during the week uh, regarding lectures assigned that week or previous week. Everyone will begin in the introductions forum and you'll want to create a thread to add your post. Uh, one tip I have for doing the participating on the discussion board, I suggest that you create your posts in a word processor such as Word and then copy and paste them into Blackboard. The reason for this is to avoid losing your post in case Blackboard crashes or there's some weird computer error. You won't have to retype your post. It's best to have a backup available. Uh, here is my post, a little introduction about myself. And when you make your post, what you may want to do is, after you make your post, click on it. You'll see a subscribe link. So you can subscribe to any thread on any of the discussion forums. And what subscribe will do is it will email you any comments that are made to that thread. This is a great way for you to keep up with comments on posts that you're interested in so that you don't have to check the discussion board constantly. You can simply see those comments in your email and go back to the discussion board uh, as needed. Now you can also navigate at the top here once you're in the discussion board. So you can go back to the forum that you were in or back to the discussion board. Um, so you'll be able to contribute also to weeks one um, this first week. Again, create a thread. Um, now if there's already several threads already here, what you may want to do first is use the search feature and search for keywords of interest so that you can contribute your post to um, or as a comment to threads that are already created. We don't we want to avoid having duplicate posts. 
So go ahead and use the search feature to look for keywords of the topics that you're interested in posting about. And if someone's already posted about your topic, well, that's fine. You can add a comment to elaborate on that topic as you wish. And that will still count towards a good post. OK, I think I've highlighted uh, the major things on Blackboard. Um, we also have some web links here. Um, let me quickly go through this. Here in the web, li web links, I've organized this with uh, titles in red to let you know what the links relate to. So the first set of links are online biology textbooks that are free and places where you can go to search for articles on specific topics for biology. And these are all uh, recommended links that are um, high quality links. Places to search for information about diseases. This is endless on the internet. And what I have here are websites that are peer reviewed information. These are written by scientists and doctors who are experts in their field, and they're reviewed by their peers who are also experts in the same area. So it's not just the opinion of a single scientist or a single doctor. These are really good resources. These are the best starting place to get uh, high quality information about disease. And last, there are links to uh, excellent biology animations to illustrate uh, processes and concepts in biology. Here's a few of those as well. Okay. Feel free to email me anytime there are questions, and I look forward to getting to know you online.